Hi everyone, I'm Camille and this is Kem with Kem. This is the CXC CSEC Chemistry Paper 2 from May June 2023. And we're zooming in on question number three. And this is an organic chemistry question. Figure three shows the fully displayed structures of three compounds A, B, and C which are from different homologous series. All right, so let's examine compound A. Um, this looks like a saturated hydrocarbon. All we have is a carbon-carbon single bond and carbon-hydrogen single bond. All right, so in compound B, we have a functional group, and that's the C double bond OOH. And then in compound C, we have a functional group that's the OH functional group so okay so for a saturated hydrocarbon only made of carbon and hydrogen so it's like a hydrocarbon is in the true truest sense of the word so this is coming from the alkane series so that belongs to the alkanes compound b c o o h that is our carboxylic group so this is coming from the carboxylic acid group or the carboxylic you could just call the carboxylic acids or the alkanoic acids now they're saying compound c burns with a blue flame in oxygen yes it does that's um ethanol and they want us to write a balanced equation for this reaction so then Let's just get right ahead and do that. So ethanol here, C2H5OH, that's a liquid that burns in oxygen. Whenever we write oxygen as an element like this, we write it as O2. Anything that ends in gen or in is diatomic. So this will give us, just like when any other organic compound burns, this will give us carbon dioxide and water water here in the form of a vapor okay so straight up let's count we have two carbons on the left we have one on the right so to fix that and we're always balancing the order cho so we go with the c's first so we'll put a two there that fixes the two carbons for the right one the left so that's good we're going to look at the hydrogen, CHO, so H comes next. We have five here on the left plus one, that's six. Over that side and over the right side, we have two. So to make that equal to six, we would need to put a three right there, right in front of the water. And that makes three, two, six. So the carbons, the hydrogens are good. So it's now a matter of the oxygen. So this would be two twos four from the carbon dioxide and then three from the water that's seven a little oddish so we have one oxygen over here on the left from the ethanol and we have two here if we put a three here that will give us three two six plus the one over here in the ethanol that would make it seven so this would be our balance equation and then for part c state which of the two compounds a or C is more soluble in water. Give a reason for your response. All right, A or C. Well, for one, straight up off the bat, we're going to go with compound C. Compound C is more soluble in water. For one, water is, water is polar and compound C, compound C, so water is polar, and we know that like dissolves like. Now compound C has an OH group. So the presence of the OH group uh, means that this compound is polar, unlike compound A, where we have just carbon and hydrogen. So this is um, a non-polar compound. So compound A is polar. So we just need to state, okay, compound C, as the OH group, 
so is polar. And, dis and dissolves in water, which is also polar. We could also state that, not to over answer, but we could state that compound A is nonpolar. And we know that like dissolves like. Okay, part D. State whether compound B or compound C would react more vigorously with sodium metal and give a reason for your choice. No. Both of them would react with, um, with sodium here. Now, it comes down to a matter of which of them would let go of that hydrogen more readily. That hydrogen at the end, well, for one, compound B is a weak acid. Compound C, you know, it can behave as an acid, but it's even weaker than um, compound B. So the one that would be more reactive in this case the one that would react more vigorously would be compound B. And so we should give, we should give um, a reason for our answer. Now, the hydrogen in compound B is more readily lost or is more readily replaced by the metal than that hydrogen in compound C. So the hydrogen in compound B is more readily lost than the hydrogen in compound C. And, you know, this is due to the fact that the, we have a, the presence of a carbon-carbon, sorry, not a carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen double bond, which adds to the polarity of the CO. Well, it adds to the polarity of the OH group in compound B. All right, but that would be, that's probably even over answering, so we're just going to state exactly why that the will state that B is more polar with the C double bond O. So the H in the OH is more readily given up than the H in the OH. So the hydrogen in the OH of COOH in compound B is more readily lost than the hydrogen in the OH of compound C. And we'll just leave it right there. So, so far for this question, that's two, four, six, eight marks. So let's go for the other seven marks. Okay, in E, write a balanced equation for the reaction of compound C with sodium metal. Okay, so compound C is ethanol. So we're going to go again, that's C2H5OH. And this is a liquid, which is going to react with sodium, which is a solid. In this case, that's, H at the end is going to be acting as a replaceable hydrogen with a very reactive uh, metal like sodium. So we'd end up with C2H5ONA. And this is actually, you can put ALC, this is an alcoholic, you call it alcoholic, um, alcoholic medium. It's not aqueous, no water is here. We're talking about liquid ethanol. And then this would liberate hydrogen, but we cannot write H by itself. It's diatomic, so it would have to be H2 gas. And then, of course, if we're going to do that, we have to just finish off and ensure that we balance. So for us to have H2 there, we would need 2 right here. And then that would make everything here too on the left, the ethanol. So we just need to match that off with a two. Let's ensure that this is visible. Two. And then the sodium would need to be two. And then that is it. Now, part F, describe one test that could be used to identify the gas that is produced in the reaction of compound C 
with sodium metal. Of course, we'll have to tell them what we expect, not just the test, but what we expect to observe. So we could could just hold a lighted spleen at the mouth of the test tube. And so, all right, so the gas present will put out the lighted splint with a pop. It's hydrogen, let's use the right terms. So the pop that we hear is a mini explosion. Sometimes it's not really poppy, it's squeaky sometimes. And it just depends on the volume of the gas that is present. And that little pop or that squeak is just a mini explosion because hydrogen is explosive. Yes, that's right. Part G, compound B and compound C react together in the presence of a catalyst to form compound E. State the name of the catalyst. All right, just a reminder of what compound B is, compound E propanoic acid, that's compound B, and compound C, we said earlier, is ethanol. So they're asking for the name of the catalyst. The name of the catalyst, well, we'd use um, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is our catalyst, and they want the fully displayed structure of compound D. No, whenever compound D, this is propanoic acid, whenever we're drawing um, or we're showing the product, the ester formed when an organic acid reacts with an alcohol, we draw the acid part first. Okay, so probably what we should do, perhaps what we could do, we could, could redraw this in blue. So we're actually seeing where everything is coming from. Or track the red, track the blue. So we're going to pinch off. Let's use black to show our, our green to show what's happening. We're going to join these together. We're going to pinch off the OH from the acid and the H from the alcohol, which will give us water. We're not so concerned about the water. We want the fully displayed structure of compound D. All right, so we're going to go with red first. So we have a CH3. From the propanoic acid and we're just going to put on the H's as we go along. Um, then we have a CH2. Then we have C with the double bond O and then from that now we're going to go on to the, the blue compound. So we're going to have now C. We have the C double bond O from the red so we're going to have the blue. Then we're going to have a CH2. Then we're going to have a CH3. It didn't ask us to name this. So this is our compound. And whenever I draw, whenever I draw an ester, it's just second nature for me to highlight the carb, highlight the, for me to highlight the ester linkage. So that is our compound. It did not ask us to name it. It's ethyl propanoid nonetheless. All right, and just like that, we've come to the end of this session. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all right, and be sure to check out the other materials that we have on this channel. Now, thank you for joining Kim with Kim. Couple later.